Okay guys, well, as you can see, I've sort of made a bit of a start on this one and uh, just trying to keep up with everything these days with traveling overseas and doing filming and talking to people and then working in the studio, it gets a bit tough to <clears throat> nail everything down properly. But in saying that, uh, what I did with this one is I laid the canvas flat and I got some very thin inks and also some uh, acrylic paint and just mixed them together a little bit of turps on it, wait until certain areas dried, put some other layers on top, used a straw as you can see it's a really it's an amazing pattern and then I've actually just put this face mask across here which is what I generally tend to do with my wildlife pieces and then I've actually carboned it, I've actually blown the, it's a line actually charging at you so you really can't see a lot at the moment but I've just sort of started to do the whiskers which I squeeze them out of the tube but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to uh, take some paints and mix them together with a couple of, I might put them in separate containers here, there's one right there, uh, I'll just get that done. I've got some slow medium, I'm going to use the slow medium because I want the background to be uh, fairly well blended in, so I'm going to put the slow medium into here, like so. Just a little, just a little container, voila, and I've got another one here as well, and I might just throw a little bit of unlocking formula in there, and generally what you use the unlocking, unlocking formula for is that if you wanted to come back once the paint had been dried, and you really wanted to rework the area, the unlocking formula will actually help that out a lot, so I'm just using the unlocking formula as well, these are really great products, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a little bit of that in with my colours and I'm going to start, I sort of want to get a background where the line's charging but you can just see this, these misted sort of blurred trees in the background and then sort of a blurred grassy area and a little bit of green in there as though these running through the grass but the whole thing's going to be fairly blurred at the back so I'm going to take a little bit of my red Mars black, red black and just Put some white into that and then mix it like so. A little bit of this green here. It's a lovely green. It's actually a where is it? It's a it's a jade green. It's it's a it's a really lovely colour. And it's a different acrylic, it's a little bit more watery this with this particular acrylic. As you can see there's a and I'll put a little bit of that yellow in there. Throw that around as well. And then I'm just going to drop a little bit of the unlocking formula, just a tad, like so. And a little bit of the slow medium, so I can just really work these colours. That's it. And like so. Let's mix that together. And then because I've got them in those little barrels, it just makes it a little bit easier for me to dip my colours in as I'm going along as well. So I've got this one here. I'm going to use that as the sort of the, the centre piece to start things with. And then just sort of sort of really spot that around in a couple of little spots, little areas, using a lovely brush. And let me see, I'll get the stick up a little higher, put it up there, just lower this down, just a tad, and, okay, and I'm just going to, because this isn't going to dry too quickly, I'm just going to put a little bit of it here and there. So you just help maneuver that along. And I've got the lines in here, the lines, <laughs> funny, here's a screw. Um, I'm going to take, I'm going to start to mix it, just literally on the, and get the slow medium, and then mix that around there as well. Just really throw these colours in all over the place. 
darker up in this corner here. I'm remembering that the line actually has a fairly light mane. And I'm just going to start to work that in. And I can use the slow medium. And even if this does dry off, um, I can actually come in and uh, use the unlocking formula to really work in those areas that I want to. And as you can see, it's, it sort of looks like it's fairly blurry, but I, I'm just going to come up. It's my main just in there. Obviously, I'm getting rid of these colours underneath. And I'll stick to these colours mostly on top. And when I get to the bottom, I'll bring the yellows in, and this is an Australian uh, gold, which is a fantastic colour as well. And then just throw those in there like so. And in there. And you can say with that, with that slow medium, that just because acrylics have got the tendency to dry quite quickly, but with the slow medium, uh, I can just get that blending time to move out a lot more than it normally would. And then even just spray some of the unlocking formula on it later on, if that's the case. But I'll continue on with this and then come back and when I'm getting down to the bottom we'll come back and do a little bit more. Talk soon. Okay, well what I am doing at the moment as well is I got a spritzer bottle that I actually filled with the unlocking formula and I'm just spritzing a little bit of that here and there and then it enables me to come back into certain areas as you can see basically unlock that colour again and work it in and I'll probably put a few layers on this as I go along but it just enables me to actually which is really difficult with acrylics at the best of times is to blend these guys and I'm only doing it with a small brush uh, sometimes you could use a larger brush but I think I'm proficient enough to keep this going and then I just get some of the slow medium once again and I pull this up the top here as well mixing it directly off the palette now. Those yellows, a little bit of that beautiful Australian red. Here we are in Africa and I'm using Australian red. <laughs> How does that work? But um, yeah, so the idea of pictures like this, you can actually see that a lot of this other material has gone outside, but it doesn't matter. I'm really just trying to get this effect and, and block these colours in so that I can come back and put some more of that unlocking formula on and basically just, you can even see it just a little bit there if I wanted to, to do that I just grab my unlocking formula like so, give it a quick spritz put the bottle down and there you go, voila and it enables me to blend those colours Probably not to the extent that you would with oils by any means. Then again, they have some issues of their own as well when you're doing this. But like I said, I'm just sort of trying to get all of these base colours in. You can see how it looks like it's the dark trees and then we're coming down to the grass at the bottom. Then there'll be a little drier in here, a little bit more of the, the, red, the, the uh, red gold in there. And then bring that all the way across so that um, you know, these colours will stand out. And then I'll start to block in the main using the squeeze tubes to bring out this other effect, really highlight the eyes. I mean, I really want the eyes to be extremely detailed so that when you look at this picture, this guy is going to be like very intensely staring at you as he sort of pounds through the grass, but should be pretty cool. And I just love those colors. I mean, these are naturally a lot of the colors that are in lines anyway, a lot brighter. Um, but by the time I finish this, I think the effect should look pretty cool. So I'll keep working and then we'll come back again. Okay, so for this particular area here, um, I'm actually going to start doing the eyes and I've just put out some oil paint and 
and um, what I'm going to do, I've just got some uh, lemon yellow and some Australian red gold and some yellow ochre and I'm just going to, I sort of barely notice it, but I'm just using a, uh, it's a Talons Roy Mac Talons brush, um, it's a two and just putting the lighter colour in first down the bottom. Let's see if I've got a pen line there. And then I've got this other yellow. I'm just going to put the lines down. Lines, God, we keep saying that, don't we? Like so. And then as I get to the top here, There because it's going to be dark around this ridge. I'm just bringing that up there like so, and then just bringing this colour in slightly, just blending it down like so. And then I'm going to go for the, the darker, really sort of make it start to stand out, and then I've still got that pupil there. What I'm going to do is when I get to the top here, I'm just going to leave an edge right there like so. And then another one at the top there. I actually want to bring the, the light into that area. And once again, bring it down slowly. If you wanted to get really detail on the eyes, which you can, but I'm just wanting the impression there at the moment. Bring the darkness down to the edge there. And then I've got some raw umber, which I'm going to bring right across the top here, to this area here. And this brush really isn't doing what I want it to do at the moment, so I'm going to get detail brush. This one is, uh, once again, it's Teclon liner. It's a zero. Um, just a little inseed oil, like so. Just dragging that darker colour down into this area. Make sure I'm leaving that light there as well. Like so. And that's into there like so. Right, probably hear the kookaburras outside. And we are in Australia. Now I'm going to clean the brush, <clears throat> wipe it off, and then just proceed to pull these lines down, these little strokes down into this area. You can actually sort of see the eye being formed there, all the way down. raw umber is dark enough to be able to put a pupil in on this as I just I'm going to leave the space where the light goes through it makes it a bit difficult because I've got these raised edges from all that stuff underneath but you can still see it there right to the edge and then when that dries a bit more later on I'll come in and put some blue and some more white in there. As you can see that didn't take too long to bring that out and then what I'll do is I'll wind this over and then bring this I'll just a little bit more just a little bit more lamp black. You know I'm 
imagine if you were doing this under, if it was a really realistic picture, you probably want to stand, tend to stay away from blacks, you know, and having your know, darker colours being made up from your Prussian blues, your Van Dyke browns, your sepias, if you wanted, a, and even your magentas to get the, uh, the darkness of the colour that you want. Roll this around, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring this down here, and just a stroke at a time, as you can see. That'll start to highlight that, even put some of the black in here now. And all the way up. There you go. You can see that sort of fairly realistic eye starting to pop out. As I said, you don't you can wait for certain areas to dry and then come back later on and really start to pop them out a lot more than what they are. So I'll go on and do the next one and um, yeah, you'll be able to see this thing come together a little bit. <coughs> okay, for <coughs> this particular section, as you can see, I've finished off all the eyes or I've gotten close to where I want them to go and then I'm just going to allow that to dry off and come back later on, but I wanted that real intensity in the eyes. I've got yet to put the white in, but I'll just leave it as it is for the time being and come back later on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to do the mane, and obviously there's a lot of darker area under the mane, which will come right out to the side here, and then I'm going to work my way up around, but all I'm doing is, for this area here, is I'm just going between the lines that I've actually created with this rigger brush, and I do tend to use the rigger brushes quite a lot because I really like that fine aspect of the lines that I can get. And as you can see, I'm just working my way around that area there, like so, and then just, you know, so you can just sort of see that real sharp edge there. And you, you know, people get so carried away about what you've got underneath, like the colors that you've got underneath. Now I just have to put the picture on top of the colors that I've already put down. So. Uh, and that's the beauty about it, you've got layers, there'll be even more layers that'll go on this with um, uh, oil crayons as well. Uh, but I'm just building that and sweeping that out, mainly because, remember the lines running forward is coming towards me, so I'm wanting to actually sweep a lot of these, these hairs, this fur or the mane out as I go along so that when I get to this edge here I'm going to sweep that right out over the edge and later on I'll come on with uh, some acrylic and you can't mix acrylic with oils admittedly when they're wet but once the oil is dry uh, and you just simply seal it quickly with a matte var uh, with a matte varnish or a fixative you can actually put acrylic over the top of that and you're not going to have to worry about it lifting at all you know when they say you can't use acrylics and oils together. Yes, you can't. When they're wet, when they're dry, it's another question and I don't care what anybody says, you can do it. I've been doing it for years and my pictures are still just fine. So I'm going to continue to work on that there. And I want to leave a lot of this colour that's coming through as well. I don't want to completely blacken that out. I need to still see a lot of that colour shining through to really give it the impression that I want. So I'm going to keep working on that and then maybe possibly this side, and then I'll come back again. Well, as you can see, I'm making a little bit of progress, and I'm just, <clears throat> I've been using the squeeze bottle to basically put in these little whiskers here, which I quite enjoy. It's, there's a real texture that you can build once the layer's dry, you can keep building the layers. Well, that looks pretty cool. And then with my dry brush in these areas here, as I said, it's all I'm doing is I'm just taking the colour. I'm not changing, obviously, anything underneath. And then just using that really dry brush to highlight the shape of the pore along the edge here as well. Bring it right up to the top. 
This is still wet in here, but I'm just pulling a little bit of this colour out and just sort of leaving, I've, I've darkened that edge there. Just once again using the dry brush. I'm just going to leave that highlight there so it's, it gives it a little bit of shape and roundness as it comes around. Like so. And then what I'll continue to do as I go along is take, and I've got, you can just sort of see I've got this picture, this line here, and I'm just really just shaping the whole, the whole thing in. And once this is dry, all of this is dry, I'll actually come back and I'll put dust and bits of splatter of things coming up and, and really create the movement within the animal. But for the time being, it's just a, it's a fairly slow process. Not boring by any means, it's actually the most relaxing thing to do in the world. You know, let your mind wander and obviously I spent a lot of time in Africa and travelling generally, but um, yeah, just some just a wonderful way to lead your life under any circumstances. Now, a lot of these videos that I'll be doing for our members area and even for the web for the um, YouTube page. There'll be different things that I'll be uh, talking to people about as far as uh, the business is concerned and uh, getting into galleries, uh, you know, how to really start your career or at least once you're into the guts of it to keep it going and nobody to make a good living out of it. I'll, uh, I'll just turn that off and we'll keep going as we go along. Okay, well as you can see I've uh, started to make some progress. I have um, turned the picture around and always be aware that you don't have to have it in the one place all the time, you can turn it around. But a lot of these colours in here I've worked ahead with here and then just using these uh, small bottles. I put um, acrylic paint in these little small tube uh, squeeze bottles. Basically squeeze a lot of the paint out as I go along. I've broken that mask down a little bit more and uh, literally what I'm doing now is I'm just starting to work my way across with the oils. So you've got the acrylics underneath, some really beautiful bright colours in these areas here. I'm really still really starting to come up quite well. Still left the eyes at the moment. I'll work on those when they get a little drier. And at the moment I'm just putting the, uh, the whiskers in, but uh, really, um, and obviously because of my shoulder, hopefully that will be taken care of in the next couple of months. But Literally just working my way through these areas now, putting the little whisker areas in. And as I said, it's just a matter of building uh, on top of each layer as I go along. Um, you know, I just look at these as though they are like a giant experiment, <laughs> which art in many senses is. But they're just fun and uh, just really happy pieces to paint. Obviously it gives a new interpretation of uh, what, a, what a lion looks like under any circumstances. And a lot of this, particularly the oils that I'm using, I'll wait until that all dries and then I will come back over the top of that again. Particularly around here there's going to be dust and there's going to be stones and other things flicking up as we go along as he's running across the dirt. Um, heading hell for leather straight towards the, um, the person that's on looking. But uh, it's a real tragedy about what's happening to a lot of our wildlife across the world. It's a, an indication that uh, we are simply part of a, an evolutionary process. Um, and we are in the middle of the sixth greatest extinction that's ever happened on the planet, just that we happen to be responsible for it. And these guys here, uh, as of the turn of the last century, there was a million of these guys wandering across the plains of, of Africa. Um, they used to extend all the way up through in India, and they're still in India, and all the way up into Britain at one stage. But uh, unfortunately, just in the last hundred and something years, we've gone from a million down to 150,000 of them. Uh, same with the rhinos. There was about a million rhinos at the turn of the last century. We almost got down to a 
I think it was 9,000, and they are back up to about 19, but still being killed off at just astonishing rates. I mean, 1,500 a year are being killed in Africa. So part of what I'd like to do with my work as I go along is to make these prints available for organisations that need to raise money to get people in there to continue to do research and then hopefully, uh, you know, help maintain the status quo. But uh, I, don't, um, I don't hold a lot of hope. There's just simply too many of us. And until we do something about us, um, you know, I don't think we have to worry about the planet looking after itself in the end because it seems to have fared pretty well over the last 500 million years or so. But the um, only problem is we need to probably get our acts together because if we don't, eventually what happens to them is going to happen to us. So, um, but I do love to portray these animals in, in, the, in the bright colours and, you know, uh, put a, a greater vibrancy and a spirit into them. Um, you know, animals have their own way of seeing the world and just because they don't see it like humans doesn't mean that they don't see it correctly. So, um, but anyway, we'll continue on.